Welcome on back guys to another Stardew Valley video. So those who haven't checked it out yet, this is kind of like a sequel to another video that I've done that talks about everything you need to know about preserved jars, as well as the crops you want to consider for every season to capitalize on that mola that you'll be making. To those that want to check it out, I'll leave the link to the video above here and also in the description below. I would definitely suggest checking it out. Back at it with today's video. Today's video is pretty much everything you need to know about kegs and also how you can optimize on the crops you want to consider to make the most money out of your kegs. Kegs are available at level 8 of farming. Once unlocked, you can craft every keg with 30 wood, 1 copper bar, 1 iron bar, and 1 oak resin per keg. You may have received it earlier as a reward in the community center for completing the artisan bundle in the pantry bundle. All to those who have picked up the remix bundle as part of the 1.5 update, this is a reward from the Brewers Bundle in the same pantry. Just like preserved jars, cakes can actually produce a variety of items and there are seven different kinds that you can make. I'll sort this from the least amount of time it takes for a cake to create an item to the most time that it takes for a cake to create an item. With five coffee beans, a cake will create you a coffee within two hours in game. Coffee beans can be grown in spring and summer in 10 days or within a greenhouse or a garden plot indoors in depth. Definitely. Coffee can either be used as a beverage, which will grant you one speed buff for four minutes in real lifetime, or you can sell it for 150 gold each. With one tea leaf, a keg will create a green tea within three hours in game. Tea leaves are received as a recipe from Caroline with her two heart event. You can either consume a green tea to replenish a tiny bit of health and energy, plus 30 max energy for four minutes in real lifetime, or you can sell them for 100 gold each. With one honey, a keg will create mead within 10 hours in game. Although bee houses available to craft at level 3 of farming will produce different types of honey based on the flower nearby, this will not actually affect the value of mead. Mead can be sold at 200 gold, which is double the value of basic honey, or when consumed, will replenish 75 health and 33 energy, but you'll lose one speed. Mead can also be aged within a cask in your basement to increase their quality. With one wheat, a keg will create a beer in one hole in game day. Wheat is grown in summer and fall in 4 days and a beer can be sold for 200 gold each. Placing one hop in a keg produces one pale ale under two in-game days. Hops are grown in summer in 11 in-game days will sell for 300 gold each and can be aged if chosen to in a cask. Now for the fun part, it is juices and wines that kegs produce you which are probably going to be the most profitable thing you'll want to consider. Juices are made through kegs using vegetables and will take 4 in-game days to produce. Juices will sell for 2.25 times of the vegetable placed in the keg. For example, a parsnip will sell for 35 gold each, but when sold as a juice will sell for 78 gold. And for wines, a keg will turn any fruit into wine within 6 and a quarter days, so just under 7 in-game days. Wines will sell for three times the amount that a fruit will sell for. For example, grapes that are grown in summer will sell for 88 gold, whereas when turned into wine will sell for 240 gold. Just like we did in the preserved jar video, I'm going to mention the crops per season that are going to be most profitable when using a keg instead of a preserved jar. For spring, you've got cherries, which are produced by cherry samplings, rhubarb, and strawberry. For summer, we've got bananas from banana saplings, mangoes from mango saplings, melon, oranges, peaches, pineapples, spice berry, star fruit, red cabbage, and hops. For fall, you'll want to consider apples from apple saplings, cranberries, grapes which are from grape starters in fall or randomly from summer seeds, pomegranates, wild plums, pumpkins, and wheat which can also be grown in summer. Surprisingly, winter has an option as well and that's crystal fruit which can either be foraged by running around Pelican Town or by randomly having it grown out from winter seeds. There are also some crops you'll want to consider that cover more than one season and that includes There is ancient fruit which is grown in all seasons You've got cactus that can be found in Calico Desert or grown in every season And there is coconut that is foraged in Calico Desert and found in Ginger Island as well Although there are plenty of crops to choose from, I wouldn't suggest growing all of these if you want to make the most profit from your kegs. But don't you worry, here are the crops you want to consider for every season to maximize the gold you'll get out of kegs. 
Full Spring, you'll want to consider Rhubarb, which is a great pick when turned into wine and will sell for 660 gold each. However, you will need access to Calico Desert for the Rhubarb seeds, which are available via the Oasis. Prior to that, strawberries are a great pick at 360 gold when turned into wine. For summer, Starfruit Wine is probably the best wine you'll want to sell at 2,250 gold each. The seeds are actually a reward when you hand in 15 items into the museum or you can buy them at the Oasis over at Calico Desert. If you don't have access, melons are also a great pick at 750 gold per wine. You may even want to consider peach saplings for peaches for a peach wine that can be sold at 420 gold. If you have access to Ginger Island, get your hands on some pineapples because pineapple wine will actually sell for 900 gold each. And you may want to try and get your hands on as many banana saplings as you can as banana wine will sell for 450 gold each. For fall, pumpkin is the best choice as they sell for 720 gold for each juice that is created. As well as pomegranates from pomegranate saplings which sell for 420 gold each. Winter is easy as crystal fruit is the only option I would definitely suggest as each of those wines will sell for 450 gold each. For all the seasons, you'll want to consider going to Calico Desert as often as possible to forage yourself some coconuts and cactus fruit for some free gold out of the wines they can make. But also a really great pick for all the seasons is obviously ancient fruit as their wines sell for 1,650 gold each. Ancient fruit is no doubt one of the best crops you'll want to consider for all your seasons because you won't need to replant the seeds. After planting your ancient fruit seed, it'll take 28 in-game days for it to start bearing fruit. After that, the ancient fruit plant will actually start producing fruit every 7 days, which is great timing to make wine every time they sprout. You'll most likely find ancient fruit seeds as artifacts to find and to hand into the museum, but you can also find them by either using your hoe on artifact spots in Sinisat Forest or the mountains. They are potential drops from bugs, cave flies, grubs, mutant flies and mutant grubs. And you can also find them as potential finds from fishing treasure chests and ancient troves. Surprisingly, even though there's a variety of ways to find yourself ancient fruit seed, there's actually a less than 1% chance that you'll be able to find them from all these options. The only exception is artifact troves, which actually have a 3.7% chance to produce you an ancient fruit seed. The best way to go about this is to hand in your very first ancient fruit seed into Guntham when it's an artifact so you can get yourself the recipe for ancient fruit seeds as well as one packet of ancient fruit seed. Plant it as soon as you can indoors whether it's in a greenhouse or in a garden plot. Wait until you're level 9 of farming to craft a seed maker to then plant any ancient fruit that you have within it to potentially get yourself some more ancient fruit seeds. If you've learned something new today, you'll have to like this video. If you want to see more Saji Valley videos, consider subscribing. Also, if you want to check out my candles, I'll leave the fuzzalicious.com link down below to check them out. Guys, I hope to see you next time. Take care.